up, everyone? Welcome to No Life Digital. Um, this is the gaming portion of the show. Make sure you tune in on Friday for the tech portion of the show. Make sure you head over to our website, www.nolife.digital. Um, all the episodes, all the videos, all the articles, all the reviews, all the previews, opinion pieces, they will all be over on No Life Digital. I should probably have the website up for you to look at it. Um, there's also going to be a couple sections added. I just got back from some work stuff, so um, finally get to work on this site. I really want to, really want to just like curate it, make it look really nice and tight um, for you guys. So make sure you check that out. Our subscriber base is growing slowly but surely. Our uh, views are growing. Our Twitter followers, our Instagram followers, everything's growing nice and slow, just how I like it. Uh, making sure that we we curate a really cool community that way when we you know bring you guys into the discord or we set up a forums it's not a, a place of just you know mayhem and i don't know having a good community is always worth a lot so i want to make sure that you know the content provides for a community like that i always find that always produces awesome just a cool place to be a cool place to hang out um so what do we got for you today we got a couple things uh, with what we've been playing, mainly it's just me. I had I got a new Xbox One X that I want to talk about, um, as well as a couple games for that, and just give you some opinions. And we got some gaming news. Then we're gonna get out of here. Short show. We're met, we're down a co-host um, again. Loco is out tonight, so uh, he will be back next week. Um, but anyways, let's just get started. Let's just hop up into this. What is up, dudes? How you guys been? How was your week? Who's out next week? <laughs> not me i'm, I'm definitely uh, here next week flip i'm gonna flip a quarter all right if i'm if i'm heads i'm getting sick next week if it's tails you're getting sick next week <laughs> it's not next week but there is a uh, a monday i think in may i'll be out ah that's me i don't care yeah i'm gonna <laughs> see uk far. in may so <laughs> all right there um, you go. yeah i was um i went to la on monday left monday and then it was a. Uh, like a seven hour flight there and then you're in the airport and stuff so it's it was a fucking long day monday then we drove three hours to to not to mecula to yucca valley then three hours back to to the to my hotel and then the next morning i had to leave for another six hours flight back then i had a day to kind of relax and then the day after i had to drive three hours up to or four hours up to walton new york and then another four hours back and i got back yesterday and it's just been crazy. It's been crazy. But it was fun, man. Uh, have you guys ever been to California or Yucca Valley? It's like a nah. desert. It's like a desert area in Cali. Dude, it is so awesome. I was surprised at how cool the desert was, man. So let me give you like a, like a breakdown of why I thought it was so cool. Like the town itself is like, a, it's kind of like what you see in like, Breaking Bad, like when they go to like New uh, or Albuquerque, and it's like kind of oh, like I thought you met the trailer park for a second. No, no, it's kind of like <laughs> Mexican, uh, like when he gets into the cartel and he's like in the desert, and it's like kind of like a Mexican town, you know. That's kind of what this this place was like. It was like super old school, like everything kind of looked like Adobe housing. But then we went to this guy's house, and you just like travel up this big ass mountain, and his house sits on the mountain and overlooks the entire town gorgeous view and i'll have video of that on my other channel uh probably next week <clears throat> but i was i was like dude why do you live out here like w w like you know la is not too far but you know you, you can still kind of move closer there's a lot more stuff to do he's like dude honestly i only paid two hundred thousand dollars for this house and his house was gorgeous and the best location i've ever seen so then i was like oh now it makes sense it's super super cheap to live out there uh, like the price of food is cheap. Everything's just cheap out there, except for water. I guess water is expensive still. But I was just like, that's that's why my plans have always been in Washington. Mm -hmm. so the same price of living there outside of Seattle that I have here. Yeah, dude, it's, like, it's, it's insane. California is notorious for being expensive. Yeah, this was not expensive at all. And I, when I tell you his house is gorgeous, I mean it was gorgeous. It wasn't like a giant mansion, right? It was a nice like one story ranch. But just like the location of it was really cool. The fact that like, he was like overlooking the entire like town. And then like if you're someone who likes to like shoot guns or ride quads and like just be outdoors, it's definitely a cool place to live. Like if you're raising a kid 
and you don't want them to grow up like, you know, in the center of LA, you know, dealing with all that. It's definitely a, it's, it. It opened my eyes to the desert. I was like, damn, this is actually kind of dope. I w- I wouldn't mind having like a spot out here. Two two hundred grand in Philadelphia would get you nothing <laughs> unless you wanted to live in the hood. You know, anywhere else, dude. It's like have fun in Kensington. <laughs> yeah, exactly. You're living in Kensington. Even now, dude, Kensington. Uh, like if you want to buy like a brownstone in Kensington or even just like a small spot, dude, it's expensive, man. Just Wait like until the East gentrification Coast. happens of Kensington. It's already say, welcome to any city, dude. dude. If you want to live cheap, you can't live in the city. Yeah. No. But then, like, that's the thing, though. Like, I, I do love living in a city, man. I don't know if I could live out in the fucking desert and have to drive four hours just to see some people. But I don't know. I don't yeah, know. that's it's a little much. Like, it's deep in the desert <laughs> for sure. I wouldn't take that. I would take, like, like definitely, like, forest or, like, any kind of, like, wooded area. Yeah, that'd be cool um, too. But like definitely within like an hour of people. Yeah, that would be cool. Yeah, I don't know. I, I thought it was I thought it was pretty dope. I thought it was pretty dope. Well, that's what I was doing. And then we went up to Walton, New York, and we stayed in a cabin that had no TV and no internet. And I wanted to fucking blow my brains out. I don't I I need at least that. I need those essential things, dude. If I don't have internet, man, and I'm like like no self service, nothing. You're just sitting there, like looking at each other, <laughs> dude. You lose your mind quick, man. I have not that, that in life. <laughs> yeah, I'm not the type of person that can just like, I don't know. I just got to be fidgeting, looking at something, reading something. It's just, I don't know. It was crazy. It felt good to kind of disconnect, but like Kate was like, everyone was wondering why you just kept like running around, like doing chores and stuff. I was like, it's just nothing to do. You know what am I supposed to do? Sit. They were literally sitting there, like just talking with each other. I don't want to fucking talk to you. I got shit to do. You know what I'm saying? Got that's deals me. to make. That's me, man. I, I guess I guess everyone's different. They, it was fun, though, because we did... Uh, one of our good friends who lives here in Philly proposed, and um, I, I filmed it for him, and it was fucking pretty sick um, being on the other end. <laughs> no, sorry. I was... What? My first thought was just a really bad joke. It's like, oh, he's really happy the Eagles won, huh? <laughs> Dude, no, there was no, so many proposals during the freaking like game, like a Sunday night in the parade. It's all I saw on like Instagram and shit. Eagles he, can win, I can get married. Shit. He watched the game with us too, but he's like um he's the type of guy where he doesn't really watch. He like grew up with all sisters, so I think this is the reason why, like like when we like for example when we were listening to music and like drinking like they wanted to put on like Matchbox 20 and like the 90s eat, like playlist there and I go. have no interest in that whatsoever Just give I, me that Matchbox 20 followed by Oasis <laughs> Exactly dude. It, dude it's like drinking like with that my, type of guy my get some power. Incubus on next At some point yeah. in the night Streetlight Manifesto gets blasted Yeah but at least everyone... that is like you know, somewhat of a, it's not Matchbox 20, dude. They're like, they're like the Nickelback <laughs> of the John 90s. John Mayer. They're the Nickelback of the 90s, dude. Matchbox. Oh, oh my God. And I had no Big, inner, I had Matthews nothing. Band. I just had to sit there and take it, dude. But it was still fun nonetheless. If you guys yeah. are listening, I love it. Are, are there any good Matchbox 20 songs? No. There's, <laughs> dude, any 90s playlist, unless it's like Pearl Jam, I don't want to fucking listen dude, to no, the only I don't even want to listen to Pearl playlists. Jam. Fuck Pearl Jam. <laughs> no, the only good thing 90s playlists are good for are like the good one-hit wonders. Like, <laughs> what is it? Nah, dude, you still had good rancid. Go to the punk shit. Dude, that semi charm like yeah. is what played like on that playlist. And I Oh man. I don't mind third eye blind. Closing but... time from semi sonic. Dude, it's like you know how many times I've already listened to those songs. Oh, I have no God, interest dude. in hearing them ever again. Dude, nineties nineties people... soft rock. Oh god. Oh. Dude, that nostalgia, dude, is such a powerful drug. <laughs> All right. <laughs> All right, let's talk about some of this stuff. So I got UFC three. And the reason I want to talk about it, I don't have any footage. I might I might do like a I, like a thing on the channel. I heard middle of the road. Dude. Is that about what you think? So you, you think guys know is? I love Fight Night. Like fucking love Fight Night. I don't think I need Fight Night anymore, dude. This is the this oh. is it, dude. It, oh damn. When I, okay. When, when I got into the beta, I was severely disappointed because it felt like the same UFC. Um, uh, but when I got the game and I started playing career mode and I started to like Dude, it is so complex. It's it's insane. So you're using like right the right 
R2 to block, to like block like this. And then you, if you hold R2 and then L2, you block on your bottom, right? So those are two button combinations that you need to like, they're vital to fighting. But then you factor in that you have to punch and stuff and, and at the same time. So then you have the, all the face buttons. So uh, X, square, triangle, circle. But then if you, um, those are all just like straight up to the head, um, you know, punch and then kick to the head. And then if you hold L2 and then press those buttons, well, then they go to the body. But then you can hold L2 and L1 and then press all those buttons. And then you can do like special like special hits to the body or special hits to the head. And then you can hold L2, L1, and R1. And then you can do like haymakers. Or you can just hold R1 and then do haymakers. And then you add in like other combos where it's like you can hold L1 and then, uh, you know, press like square to do it like a, like a, a hook to the face and then you can press r2 and then x to go down to the body and those and then you could you have to do them quick to do like a combo right and you can string up to like eight to like eight combos in a row where you're just like smashing the controller like this to win but if you can't just like start smashing the controller because it's so because it's ufc if you get caught in the open you can get put to sleep especially if you're fighting someone who has like strong hands and then you factor in, that's all just top game. And then you factor in submission stuff. And that's where it gets even more crazy. They're, they perfected the submission game where it's like, you get someone like Dan, Daniel Cormier, where his, his, his mode is to just get on top of you, hold you down and just pummel your head in, right? You can do that. Like you can set up stuff to do that. Or if you're someone who, who likes to do more like uh, submission moves, like chokes and like arm bars and stuff, you can set up moves to do that. And then you can like, it, it's so insanely complex and I'm having such a great time playing it. It's fluid. All the like punching feels like you can like feel it. They added this new momentum thing. So like if I sway to the right, which is a new mechanic, you couldn't sway in the last UFC. So if I like bob my head to the right or to the left and then someone swings a haymaker to the right while I'm doing that, it'll knock me out immediately or at least daze me depending on who I am. So, you know, it's just all these different complexities that they put into this game. And then you add in, like, the way that they tie in the UFC culture into the game. Someone who knew UFC and who loves UFC put this game together or was, like, you know, overseeing this. I was really impressed at how well it's done. They, they tie in, like, social media, which is huge in UFC. Uh, I mean, you have, like, Megan O'Leavy who does, like, these UFC minutes that pop up. So, say... Say uh, on my social media, it's like fake social media, but it's still a cool little thing because you can win extra money, right? So say I call the round. So I'm fighting some, I'm fighting the champ. I'm fighting, I'm getting a title shot. And I say, I'm going to knock him out in the second round. And I do that. Well, they have like series of cut scenes and a series of just like little special events that'll, that'll affect, you know, that, that performance. It's, it's so dope, man. Uh, I haven't really played online yet, which is really, which is why I haven't kind of um, recorded anything or, or done a full review on it. I've just played career mode. I just got the belt. I'm a welterweight, so I, I faced off against Tyron Wood Woodley for the belt. And what's cool about it, too, is kind of like the old uh, punch-out thing. It's like you have a series of fighters who ha all have kind of like different skills. So I'll fight someone like Mickey Gall, who's kind of like an up-and-coming MMA guy. But he's well-rounded, and he can punch and kick, and he's pretty good on the ground. Or, or I'll fight someone like uh, Masvidal, who is more like this just crazy, unorthodox fighter who will swing around and do weird, like, spinning back fi fists. And then again, you fight the champ, and he's just, like, massively good. And you're sitting there, and you're trying to beat this dude over and over again. You're hitting reset. And thank God that they made the reset feature like really fast where it's like, as soon as you press reset, you're back in the round, you're fighting. You're not like waiting for the cutscenes. You're not waiting for anything. So they really like tune this game and, and use the punch out kind of method in a way that just fits MMA, man. And like I said, dude, this is it. I don't need fight night. I got this. I'm happy with this. It's insane how happy I am with UFC 3. It's still little, you know, technical things here and there. Submissions are still a little bit weird. It's it's like if your submission offense or defense is in at least in the 90s, which means you have to, you know, specifically focus your fighter into submissions and sacrifice everything else, you're probably going to get submitted. They they just haven't really worked they haven't really worked that out yet. Um but I haven't like I said I haven't played online. I don't know how the online is. Um, I know a lot of guys are who are into this uh, this game are like doing like 
I don't know. They're getting really in depth with with it. So I think I'm gonna start to get into online now that I got the belt. But I'm, dude, I'm I'm super impressed. If you like MMA, if you like Fight Night, I think you're really gonna like this game. Takes a little bit to get into it and learn everything, and you're still gonna take. It's still gonna take you a while to learn like all the moves for every fighter. I don't think it's possible actually. But you know, you can. It's gonna take you a while to get into it. But once you get to the swing of it and you understand like how vital it is to counter and you understand how vital it is to to have a good takedown defense against uh, people like Cormier who can just fucking jump on top of you and just pound your face in. Well, then you start to like get into it and and you start to feel what it's like to to kind of, uh, you know, kind of be in the MMA. Um, and that's what I like the most about it. It's like it, they really do it well. It's almost like watching an embedded thing and then jumping in the ring and training. They have like these new camp system where it's like if you if you train with a certain camp, you can't like fight against certain people. Or if you um, say your opponent is someone in your camp, you can't train at that camp. You're going to have to train at someone else's camp. It's just a bunch of little stuff, man, that makes it like true to life. And I, I'm super, super happy with it. I highly recommend anyone get it who's, who's, who likes Fight Night um, or MMA because this is, this is it. This is the best one. They spent a lot of time on it. I don't remember when the second one came out. I want to say it was two, two, three years ago. But it felt like a while, especially since we don't have a fight night anymore. So this is dope. This is super, super dope. Super dope. And then I also got an Xbox One X, um, mainly for PUBG. My friend has PUBG and, you know, kind of want to play with him. I, I don't get to see him too often because he works a lot. So I was like, let me pick this up. I like PUBG. I want to play PUBG. I know PUBG runs like shit on the Xbox, but... You know, it seems like it has a big user base. It can't be that bad. Holy shit, is this game so broken on Xbox. On Xbox One X, mind you. And no one's surprised. <laughs> I didn't realize how bad it was, and it's not getting any better. And it still has I mean, millions we, we, of players. Sorry, dude, we were talking about how it dropped to like four or five frames per second. Yeah. Like it's not that bad. Sorry, anymore. dude. <laughs> but it, it's not you're not you're not getting four or five frames per second. But you're getting like 10. <laughs> you're getting like 12 <laughs> in some areas. It sucks, That's man. insane. It's, it, it really is insane. What sucks too is that like I started playing Fortnite because of it. You know, like I like that Battle Royale mode. So I was like, I can't deal with this frame rate being so bad. I'm just going to play Fortnite. But it's just a different game, man. And it's a shame because I know that PUBG is losing a lot of players to Fortnite because of it. So they just need to fix it. And I think a lot of people will come back to it. I don't know how they're going to fix it. If this is how the game is after how many months it's been out, it's I think it's we're going to get year now. We're going to get a locked fucking 30 if that. And I don't I don't know if that's enough. You know, I it's playable. They they just made it barely playable and that's it. And it's still fun. Like it's still PUBG. You still get like an you still get that rush when you know you're you're the, one of the last squads left and you know your fucking two teammates are down. Like it still has that to it, which is why I'm so like disappointed in it because it's I, I, PUBG is just an awesome experience, but it's just fucking broken on Xbox, man. That said, I still so play it. Five hundred and sixty dollar rush is all I'm saying, dude. <laughs> <laughs> well, I also wanted the Xbox One X that I, I want to get the Game Pass, you know. Plus, we do no life now, so I figured we had yeah, someone has no, to have an you. Xbox. You know what I mean? I could afford it. I was like, let me pick one up. Um, let me know when you get play can play more than three games on Game Pass. Because I want it to work, I want to buy one, but Dude, there's, I can't. I can't justify that. There's uh, like nothing on Xbox. At least I shouldn't say that because they do have a it's lot. Like of the games. Switch, dude. That's <laughs> well, they, they do have a lot of games, but I already have a lot of them for PS4. You know what I mean? So That's, it's like yeah, because you know, Xbox is like relying solely right now on third party to survive. Yeah, but the, I will say it does run nice. The online experience, in my opinion, is a lot better than PlayStation's. Um, and you know it's no, it's, and I I agree. Like, and they're the way they're uh, the actual like system level, like the operating system works. I like it a lot better. It's yeah. more fluid, especially if you use it for like a streaming box, things like that. There's yeah, that's cool too. They no do four K. They do four K streaming right on the device, so you don't need like an Elgato or anything. You could just plug in a hard drive, four K streaming or not streaming, but like four K recording right onto it, which is pretty dope. It's just like, yeah, it's just, it's a dope system, but there's just nothing for it, man. I got Quantum Break, which is like a fucking mad old game. Um, 
on it because I was like, I already have fucking Madden. I already have UFC 3. I already have Monster Hunter on PS4. And that leaves everything like just like stupid kind of indie games that no one plays on there. And then PUBG. Dude, if they didn't have PUBG, I don't know. I don't know what they would be doing, dude. I don't know what they would do. That, I remember we were talking about like, is PUBG a system seller? It must be. Because there's so many people that play PUBG on Xbox. And I mean, there's nothing else to play, dude. At least exclusively. But I wanted to talk about Quantum Break as well. This game is actually pretty dope. They do it. It's weird because it's like, I guess when it first came out, it was done in like, like with a show next to it. Because yeah. what happens it, is like. It came out with a show because it seemed, it, the concept seemed cool. And like from what I saw, it seemed cool. It's just, it was another thing that didn't, it seemed cool. I wanted to try it. Is it worth buying an Xbox? They need yeah. more of that. If they have, you know, like 10 of those things, yeah, then it's worth it. Yeah. Yeah, but it is it is like an interesting thing. Like you you play this like game part, which is pretty good. The shooting is good. It's really just a story though. But it influences what kind of show you see. So it's like after chapter one uh, in the game, well, then you get like a full like hour show that comes after it that is affected by some of the choices that you made in the game part. And I've only went through the first chapter, but I was like, this is actually a good idea. That's probably cost so much money to produce. I mean, like you could tell like some of the show is a little cheesy, but they got good actors in it. And, you know, it, it does serve the story of the game. So I, I think that's pretty cool. I would like to see, I would like to see that like expanded in a different way. Uh, maybe not Metal so much Gear a Solid show. Six. Oh, Metal Gear show? <laughs> or just Hideo Kojima just live streaming? I would yeah, like that. I think that kind of concept would be sweet with that. But yeah, we'll see. Dude, Hideo Kojima and Suda51 together. <laughs> I just think it might just be too expensive for game developers to do. To oh, no, produce a entirely. game and a TV series next yeah. to it. With real actors, like, you know, And expect actors. it to be good, too. Yeah, no, like, that's one of those things where, like, I think that's a cool concept, but that's definitely... Uh, concept that you have to sell it on everything you can get it on pc too you can get it on pc so if you wanted to try it out on pc because it is a, like an experience like i've never played a game like this before so if you want if you wanted to check it out it's cool it's like a like time travel stuff and like slowing down time and like i said uh the combat's pretty dope it kind of feels like max pain a bit where there's like bullet time but then there's other skills involved so it's it's pretty it's pretty cool i've been having fun with it i've been having fun with it yeah, Xbox One X, they just need they need to get their fucking games up. There's this new, like, what is that fucking pirate game coming out? Sea of Thieves. Yeah, I'm going to check that out, but I don't know. It doesn't look that fun, <laughs> to be honest. It it seems like it's another one of those games that it could be it's fun. So hyped it, up. It, it, it's hyped up because it, it seems like it's fun if you have four other YouTubers playing it with you. And yeah. you can do it for the XD funny moments. <laughs> Yeah, I guess. Outside of that, man, yeah, yeah, yeah no. We'll see. But they don't, that's, I don't know. If they fix PUBG, dude, I guarantee you they would sell a ton more. That's a big if. Microsoft needs to say, here, Blue Hole, take all this money and fucking fix the goddamn game so we can sell more Xboxes. That's all they need and to do. You what know what Microsoft? they'll do with that money? They'll buy more uh, pre-purchased assets no they'll just they'll just spend it on more pre-purchased assets from the fucking uh epic store and <laughs> make more loot boxes like dude no, wh- I don't when, know what the when does microsoft just buy ea i don't know but that that's definitely going to be a big move i mean i'll tell you I mean, what cool. i'm definitely going to be buying all my sports games on xbox now that i have the one they just look better on Xbox One X. If you I mean, if they TV. get Game Pass, there's no reason not to. Yeah, and that, that too. You know, I'm really hoping this Game Pass thing fucking pans out because that would be, that would make the purchase a lot more justified. Um, yeah, I don't, we never talked about those rumors did too much, did we? Well, we touched on like, it, but nothing rumors, really came but, yeah. of it. Yeah, I mean, like, there's there's no real, like, the only thing I can think of is, I mean, I mean you know, Microsoft buys EA. Probably not going to happen. What Microsoft should do is be like, hey, EA, here's some extra cash. Let's release, you know, these games on a Game Pass. Yeah. What no. they should do is throw them some some money for that because that way EA is getting paid and Microsoft's getting people who are jump not jumping ship, but 
clearly are going to pick the third party on their system because of the Game Pass. And I think that's, I mean, that's what they're hoping for. That's why they would even be, that's why there was rumors even about it. It has to just be for Game Pass. I mean, yeah. if, if if Microsoft is the only console with a Game Pass and they have EA, they have PUBG, they have uh, Activision, and you can get the Call of Duties, like, you know, annual games, you don't have to pay for them. You know, you just pay the, you just pay the fee. Um, I mean, that's, that, that's pretty strong. compelling. Yeah. yeah, that's a strong purchase right there. That's that's hard to say. Do I want PlayStation or do I want Xbox? Because uh, everyone's going to have a Switch anyway, I think. I think the Switch is going to be universally just everyone's going to have one. I think they're going to have like a cheaper version of a Switch or you know what I mean? Where it's just like or bring the price uh, down a little bit. I don't I think they're just going to I think whenever they launch a second one, they'll just drop the price rather yeah. than like make a cheaper version. Which would you, I mean, it's just going to be like a Game Boy. Everyone had a Game Boy, and then you had either PlayStation or Xbox. And if you're lucky, you got both or PC. So, I mean, like in two years, you know, that Ke the Tegra K1 processor is going to cost 10 yeah. cents yeah, in a bargain bin. You know what I mean? Let's get, a, let's get the, Switch, the new Nintendo Switch XL with that Tegra X2 in 2021. Yeah. Well, what Nintendo could do is do like a fucking. Because it runs USB C. I don't know if it's Thunderbolt three, but just put a graphics thing in the dock, and then you can dock the switch, and then it upscales a four K. Boom, sell that for two hundred bucks. You know? Especially when it's an Nvidia chip and would run really well with Nvidia hardware. Yeah. Ding, ding. <laughs> I the only thing I'm thinking is if they do that, that's going to be when the Tegra X two is in there. That way they can at least try to get 1080p on the on the handheld. Yeah. Because uh, you're not you going to really get 4K, need it though. Not, you're not going to get 4K docked and 720p handheld. That's way too drastic of a difference. Yeah, that's true. But you don't really need. I don't know. You don't really need it. Because at that point, like, might even have the handheld portion. Just make a fucking home console. <laughs> yeah. Well, that's I the problem. Know. I like I I exclusively play my Switch undocked, like in my hands. I don't like playing it docked. But uh, certain games, I like playing docked. Um, when i'm at my like you know at my desk doing stuff yeah i just find like the switch is just so much it's just like a portable thing for me where like if i'm gonna sit down and play i'm gonna play on playstation i mean they're, they're gonna have multiple revisions they did that with the 3ds they did that with the ds they did that with the game boy advance they did it with the game boy when they made the game boy color what if they had like a well, switch they, xl they to with like a 10 inch like an ipad screen would that be something that you'd be interested in Mm. Uh, mm. I think it depends mm. on it's going to come down to hardware and not just the screen but it's going to come down to what's inside the revi the revised switch yeah because yeah. like for me like they uh, they're, they're gonna have to update it at some point just because I it's it's a Tegra like Apple okay Apple is the only company with their a series who has figured out how to make a tablet actually hold its weight for three years no one else has done that. There's still older NVIDIA tablets that after three years, they're still just as dog trash as any like Intel or like any, you know, the Snapdragon ones are like that. They're going to have to come up with a revision for it or something to figure out a way to do that. Cause I don't see that K1 chip lasting seven years, you know, like a PlayStation. And they've said they want to, they want to support, let alone the battery. Right. They can't even get into the oh, battery. Oh God, yeah. They want to support the Switch like for like an undetermined amount of time, they've pretty much said, which is essentially what they did with the 3DS. That system lasted hella long. Like, God damn, that was a long system. Yeah. And that, I mean, if they do that well, the, it's proved to sell, it's popular. So, no, expect, yeah, expect them to keep it going for as long as they can. I just mean, I think every like three years, they're going to have to, it's got to have the new Switch. Yeah, like they're just gonna yeah. have to do that, and wait until they do the special edition ones. You know that's gonna happen, because just like the dude, the Switch is the new 3DS, which is not a bad thing. I think the 3DS is one of the greatest consoles, like rivaling even home consoles because the quality of the library, the software is so good. Yeah, well, I mean, yeah, essentially it's just like this. It's just the new Game Boy, really. You I mean, know, that's not a bad thing. The new Game Boy, the Switch is the new Game Boy. What thrives at is handhelds. They've always thrived at handhelds. Yeah. I'm just happy that th this yeah. is like 
now it's like you don't they don't need to break it up into two things where you have a Wii experience and a Game Boy experience. It's all well, that, in one system. All the graphics the look the same. That killed the Wii U was yeah. a divided schedule of development for games on both on both systems led to droughts on both systems at times. The only thing that 3DS had going for it was it had a backlog at the time that was able to keep it going while the Wii U was just dead in the water. Yeah. They don't yeah, they don't need to do that. Plus like now, it's yeah. easier on developers. Developers just make it for one console. Yeah, now there's no more, you know, Fire Emblem on the 3DS. You have Fire Emblem, you have all your major IP on one platform. Yeah. Now that's going to be huge for them in terms of sales because software is really one of the defining factors of what sells. They need to fix their in, their online experience. That's going to be the big thing to look out for. If they don't fix it, if they don't fix it, it's going to be <sighs> even a system $20 for kids. a month is going to be rough even If they don't know. fix it, it's going to be a system for kids. And I don't think they yeah. I don't know if they if they're leaning if they don't even give a shit about it and they know that. So they're like fuck it, let's just put something together. But if they it, make it a nice experience, well then adults will buy it and they'll be able to play Mario Kart on the train with their friends and you know, like an LTE switch would be fucking so dope. But, but we'll see. not if it doesn't like if you're still having issues like you were talking about a couple of weeks ago with how bad it was. No adult's going to spend twenty dollars if the service is shit. Yeah. Dude, Especially Splatoon, since it's going to have been free for well over a year. The Splatoon uh, multiplayer experience is a fucking joke. It's a joke. And if any game copies that, there's might as well just not have an online experience. Then it's so bad makes no sense whatsoever especially because that, that will be that's still weird to me that they're doing it that way because all their handhelds were always free yeah i mean like, all those all the 3ds all, and 2ds and all their if it was always good. free now yeah. this is the first time they're in their history they're they're adapting to the modern medium of, of paid online yeah well, which I'm is down. still I'm also down. dumb to me personally but okay yeah. That's just my I mean, that's just my I'm, PC master race shout out right there where it's like <laughs> why are all you idiots paying fifteen dollars a month for this? But <laughs> dude, don't get me wrong, I agree with you. My PS uh, was it now or whatever the plus or whatever the sixty dollars for the year is is about to charge on my account like at the end of the month. Yeah, just so you like, can oh, have barely, access to your internet that you already I have access to. I barely play online. I barely play online, but if I want to, gotta have it. Yeah. Yeah, I have an internet for this for the Switch, the um, PlayStation, and the Xbox now. Yearly subscription. That's, it, it, That's- it, yeah, when they're all said and done, with the sixty and sixty for PlayStation, Xbox, yeah, twenty for the Switch, you're dropping one hundred and forty a year minimum on yeah. online play for your three systems. Yeah, and that's the price of a processor. <laughs> <laughs> For all and of those I'm, keeping well, track, thinking that fucking, PC gaming's too yeah. expensive, and I'm fucking paying for the internet service. Yeah, and the internet. Yeah, bullshit, man. Bullshit. I think what'll happen is I'll decide if like where I want to, like at least between the two, um, PlayStation Xbox. Like, I'm probably gonna go to Xbox. A lot more friends, my friends have it on Xbox. Whatever. It's got a better online experience. I don't play many games online on PS4 except for like Madden and that's pretty much it. So I can just port it over to Xbox. I, I will say now that Dragon Ball Fighters is out, I have been using my online a lot more. Yeah. Alright, let's get into news. Search 2 continues. The sci-fi souls like in 2019. Um, I did a little kind of review on this um, since I had this game, I did a little stream on it too. You can check it out on our Twitch. Uh, I guess it's just a little bit more of the same. I, the Surge is dope, but it's just not that fun. <laughs> Does that make sense? Like, it's a cool it, that game. One was, that one was divisive, wasn't yeah. it? Because that definitely left a big, like, either love it or hate it of their yeah. take on Dark Souls. Because I know some other people who loved it too. Like I like I like it. I definitely like it. But it just, the story was super lacking. And then you're kind of, like, they it didn't make up for it in, like, customization. Where Dark Souls, it's a, more of an RPG experience where, you know, you're putting different armors on. You're testing out different skills and stuff. This didn't really have that. It was more just, like, it was more just, like, a Souls combat game set in this sci-fi world. I think they need to add more RPG elements. 
do some type of like new stuff, you know, maybe add like some type of crafting, like scavenge parts and craft things. Um, because right now, I mean, the search is just like a bargain bin game right now. So I don't know. I did have fun, a little fun with it though. It is really hard too. Shaq Fu 2 delayed. <laughs> wow. What a shocker. I didn't even know there was a Shaq 2. Dude, it's due to, this, this it's due to licensing going. issues for some reason, and the Wii U this, version is canceled. Oh, maybe Remember? Shaq finally realized, hey, I should stop making video <laughs> games. Dude, like this, I remember when the, the licensing for this got announced years ago, and people were like, why? And now we're seeing. <laughs> why yeah, I like, I like that the top comment at window, okay, from mynintendonews.com, the top comment is there was a Wii U version. <laughs> to be fair, the Xbox 360 and PS3 versions were also canceled. <laughs> Why they even developed for them, I don't understand. I'm just no, I'm still just enthralled with the fact that every single comments like I okay on a on a website solely about Nintendo news, every <laughs> single one's like, This is a game? <laughs> there was a Wii U version? That what? What is this? I don't understand why people think Shaq is like this superhero. I, I, I he's funny. That's like, I mean, he's, I mean, he was a superhero like 15 years ago. Don't we don't talk about, about Shazam? <laughs> oh yeah, like Shazam. Kazam was Shazam, fucking Nickelodeon. Shazam, whatever it is, it didn't exist. Was it Shazam or Kazam? Kazam was Nickelodeon, right? Was there was also Steel. You remember Steel? No, I don't. That was a bad one. <laughs> I don't remember that. Oh my god, he's made two bad superhero movies. He was hey, a dude, man but though. don't worry. He you was can, the uh, 90s rock. Like we have the rock <laughs> now. Shaq was the 90s rock. Yeah. For but sure. guess what, dude? You can, if you want to bring Shaq Fu, a legend reborn, back, you can go to their Indiegogo page. Oh, really? Let's check it out. I think it's already been funded. I don't think you can spend any more money on that. Thank God. Oh, what a shame. Yeah, I mean, an Indiegogo campaign getting canceled? What? <laughs> Kickstarter game? Not huh? good. What? Like ninety eight percent of them? Rust is out. Yeah, dude. <laughs> if you remember Rust? Rust is out now. Fully launched, I guess. Officially released. Two thousand eighteen, the year of the official releases. Uh, fuck off, dude. Oh, sorry. I was checking Steam so I could see how much they if they rose the price on it, and I got hit with a ton of spam for uh, CS:GO bullshit. Hey, bro, dude, are you looking for CSGO skins? <laughs> they know who they're targeting. <laughs> no, dude, the worst, too, is, like, half of them are, like, from your old friends. Like, friends you, like, used to play games with, and then, like, two years later, they just get a CSGO sponsorship for their, like, three-cent affiliate code link. <laughs> so now everyone's doing that shit. Well, Rust. I don't know. <laughs> if, you, if you play Rust. $35. I don't know. Metro uh, 4, Bandai, Namco, Singapore working on it? What's this, Doobie? What's so, this, this the news? rumor, it's only a rumor right now, There's um, there was a posting on LinkedIn for a job opening um, looking for, or it wasn't a, a job opening, it was like a listing, somebody's thing on there was talking about two games on the Switch, one being Ridge Racer 7, which is a pretty decent racing game. No, it's not. Um, it's terrible. As an exclusive <laughs> it's so a I'm terrible like, fucking racing game. I hated and that game. That got confirmed, I believe. But um, the other one was um, what was Metroid that jet skiing Prime? game? Wave Racer. Yeah, dude. Yeah. They need to bring Wave Racer back. I would play Wave Racer, Hell but um, but yeah. So um, your uh, Bandai Namco is Singapore, and apparently it's looking like Bandai Namco is the team behind the new Metroid Prime. From the last team was um. Retro Studios, based in Texas. Now it's Bandai Namco. Uh, but the cool thing is, is, a lot of the Singapore team are the people who worked on that Star Wars 1313 game that got canceled right before Lucas like got bought by Disney and EA and everything. All that crap happened. That game looked really nice. So if those guys are working on the new Metroid Prime, which is what this rumor is, I'm do I'm like excited to see what that's gonna look like. Interesting. So, yeah, um, and it's looking like it's this is probably gonna be a 2019 release, which wouldn't surprise me. I don't know, man. 
I don't know. All right, dude. We're going to start it right here. Right here, dude. We're going to start this bet. What's coming out first? Red Dead Redemption 2 or Metroid Prime 4? I bet you we don't see Metroid until 2021. (laughs) Nah, that's... I don't... It says it's still early in development. Damn. They're not going to release it next year. I... I think holiday 2019 is a possibility. No way. This game is not going to get done. They're not going to rush Metroid 4 Prime in one year. <laughs> unless they fucking, unless they put it a lot be, of resources in it. It would be two it. years, a little over two years. And I don't know how long they've been developing it before that. Yeah. I mean, I think part Pokemon of me thinks. This year, though. I really do think Pokemon is this year. Yeah. At the same time, I wouldn't be surprised if that big switch thing that happened last year where they like announced all of these that was them just being like shit we have nothing uh hey we're gonna do this so pull yeah. and then just le- yeah just yeah, leave, leave that conference hi. like uh hi. hey guys we need to start working on this uh can you do that just dude just straight up pull a sony hi we have these games they're in development um you'll see them in about four years yeah. but hey final fantasy 7 remake you like this don't you it's not coming out for another seven years yeah, I guarantee you this game is at least three years out. Three years, I would say. We'll get a new Switch by, by the time this game comes out. Maybe they'll launch hey, it. It might actually Switch. help for it because then you could really like make Prime 4 look really nice. Yeah, I don't. I just I don't know. It's, we haven't heard nothing from it. They, I mean, they're just saying now that like a they have a team put together for it. It's early in its development. We'll see. We'll see. Uh, Chinese PUBG games in early access. Chinese PUBG mobile. China number one. China number one. Bing bong bing. <laughs> what was it? I, 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 Dr. Bong Mr. bing bing. God damn it. Right. <laughs> We're fucked. <laughs> Shit. Dude, as long as they get the fuck off the fucking North American <laughs> servers with all their goddamn hacking and just play on their phones, I do not. Cool. <sighs> I can't wait to get it for my phone, dude. Yeah, dude. Army attack and exhilarating battlefield. <laughs> that's that's what that's what you're hyped on. That's the name of the games. <laughs> it sounds like a really shitty Clash of Clans ripoff. Yeah, it does. Army attack, strike force. But hey, dude, at least they're uh, one. <laughs> they're they're holding to their heritage highly. Okay, like you can't make a PUBG game and actually have it released. <laughs> okay, you got to keep it in early access. Of course, an early access mobile game. Why not? PS4 Pro update will make big graphical improvements for 1080p, non 4K users. Here's how. Uh, so this is cool. I was watching the thing on Digital Foundry. If you don't know who Digital Foundry is, just go subscribe to them. They give you all the graphics breakdown of all games, all consoles. They do a really good job. But basically, this new PS4 Pro update, uh, or it allows people who have a PS4 Pro but a 1080p screen to get an up res 4k kind of image through downscale uh, it. yeah they do like sample set uh super sample anti-aliasing which basically just smooths all the jaggies out and makes it real nice um and then i think they also said that there is um it's like a toggle so you can like turn it on and off for specific games i guess if you want if a game has like an unlocked fps you can turn it off and get more more frames um so that's actually pretty cool um uh, you know, any kind of, any kind of, uh, like more PC like experience on a console is welcomed. I think like, give us like the full thing, man. Give us the resolution, give us the refresh. Like, let us really tweak these games like a, like a PC, you know, I'm sure a lot of people want to play on like super minimal low and just crank the frames, you know, where someone like myself, I don't mind playing at 30 FPS. If it's a game, like a cinematic single player game, as long as it looks nice and crispy, um but you know that should be that should be a decision left up to the consumer and i think this is a good step in that direction uh i wonder if there's anything else um they put assassin's creed up super simple as a 4k image for 1080p instead of locking itself to 1080p game also runs at a lock 30 fps regardless of resolution so there's now some benefit for non 4kers which is pretty cool because i guess a lot of people, you know, they think you can, you only get the PS4 Pro if you have a 4K TV. But now it's pretty compelling reasons, especially now with some games where you can do, like Monster Hunter has like high frame rate mode or high graphics mode. Uh, and if more games do that, then it'll help sales on PS4 Pro. It's definitely a pretty, pretty dope console. 
Kingdom Hearts 3. D- what is this? D23? Is that the name of the game? Uh, no, D23 is the uh, kind of like this, like a series of events that happens in Japan. Uh, it's Disney 23. Oh. Um, and this is kind of where they drop these trailers at. They did one over the summer. And this is the newest one. Um, this game, like, I I do think one of the reasons why Final Fantasy VII has been dead in the dirt is because they are trying to get this game out as soon as they can. Yeah. It's been in development for far too long. How long? Um, since probably around when um, 15, Final Fantasy 15 got really pushed hard. They put Kingdom Hearts 3 on the back burner for that because Nomura's like doing all these games. Um, but this is the first mainline Kingdom Hearts since 2, and 2 was on the PS2. It completely skipped the PS3. They had all the remakes for them and the side games, but I mean, you don't need your main development team working on all those side games. Uh, so this is, it's been in, it's just been in development for. Hold on, really quick. I just years. want to show the audience how weird it is watching Woody from Toy Story speak in Japanese. <laughs> it's so <laughs> odd, dude. It's so great. <laughs> I do kind of, I don't know who they're going to get to do the voices. I I mean, I would love love to see that, but we'll see how much they're willing to spend. Yeah. Um, But no, like the trailer, like the game looks really nice. Um, So far we have the confirm, uh, this trailer gives us confirmation of the monster, the Monsters Inc. world. Which I think is cool. I like Monsters Inc. To be honest. Yeah, I think that's pretty, I think it's pretty awesome. And then, um. We get the uh, that there's a tangled world in there as well. I think. I don't think I've seen that. Tangled. Yeah. It's one of those other it. Disney movies based on. Uh, was it based on um, Rapunzel? I have no I think clue. It was. I can't remember. But that's apparently going to be in the game. Um, no, I mean the game looks fun, so I'm it's excited like- for it. But the my main issue is just how stupidly convoluted the fucking plot is. Yeah, that's what I was going to ask is, is it bad that I don't know who this cat person is? I said the same thing. The cat person is, it's Sora. Right, so why is is Sora a cat now? He's in like... That's why I'm so confused is like... If you remember the older games, whenever they like visit like um, a different world, sometimes they take on the physical attribution. So like... Okay, so that's why Goofy's not Yeah, they go to Atlanta, he becomes a freaking merman. Yeah, I was still so just very like confused because it's like it does look like Sora, but like yeah, why is why is Sora a furry? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> like, like, the what? Of the <laughs> um, but yeah, no, like my, the whole issue is this this trailer. Uh, if you didn't play the side games on the mobile phone, the Game Boy Advance, the 3DS, the Nintendo DS, and the PSP. You're missing a lot of info from this trailer that you kind of need to understand what the hell's going on. Yeah. With the dude with the pink hair and why the dude at the very end of the trailer is like threatening Sora. Yeah. If you want to know all that, you have to play the side games. And sure, you can play them if you buy the 2.5, 1.5, 2.8, 3.14, fucking whatever they sell these days. Because, you know, they made like 15 different remakes. I mean, just, do we it's know that big. it's going to definitely contain all of that? All I want to know is I want this game to just be the end of whatever storylines they have going. Just end it all and then start something new in Kingdom Hearts 4 when that comes out in 2050. Because <laughs> that's how long it's going to fucking be. I mean, this looks like it would be like a new standalone version, though, wouldn't it? If they're going to release the third one. At that's least, at least paired that's up the, with uh, the first two. It, this is this is the end of what they call the uh, the Heart Seekers saga, which started with Kingdom Hearts One. But then you had the PSP game Birth by Sleep, where that last character who's like pointing his like sword at Sora. That's where that guy comes from, because the, the plot makes no sense. Long story short, that dude was one person who's split in two and the other side of his body, the other person, his heart is inside Sora. Yeah. And then the pig haired guy, why they can't remember him. 
from the Change of Memories game where they did a whole thing with, with memories and it's the reason why Roxas is in Kingdom Hearts 2. It's, it's just ridiculous. I want this to be the end of the Kingdom Hearts plot. I just want it to be over. It does. I mean, this trailer does look pretty cool. Yo, yeah, the game looks great and it's going to be fun to play. But you yeah, just gotta. I, like, I think a lot of people don't even give a shit about the story. At this point, you, you can't give a shit about the story. It's too convoluted. It like, makes who's no gonna sense. Who's going to remember what happened in Kingdom Hearts 1? Uh, the people who make three hour long lore videos on YouTube. Yeah, that's like one person. <laughs> <laughs> Hopefully they, I don't know. I'm definitely going to check it out because I, uh, I liked the first one. I never played any, any other Kingdom Hearts afterwards. Uh, I would say if you uh, if you just if you PS4, just pick up the 1.5, 2.5, and uh, play the games on there. You should be fine. All right, and the last one, Marvel is dead. What's up with this, Doobie? Yeah, um, Marvel vs. Capcom Infinite is uh, for one not going to be at Evo. I instead, uh, they have Blaze Blue Tag Cross Battle, which doesn't even come out until May three two or three months before evo like happens and it's already confirmed to be in evo which marvelous capcom is really struggling it did not sell well it was received by casuals poorly the community still like they should still support the game like that's the game they like they should support it but the fact that it's not even making the capcom like pro cup like the major capcom tournament like it's capcom this is their game and they're not even featuring it on their tournament that's bad damn yeah this is what happens when you don't put money into the game you reuse assets and you don't care what your product looks like why does the community like it then because i mean people I mean, like do they like do they like any game like this is that what you're saying uh, there's some people that I mean, there's brand it's Marvel. Exist. Yeah, it's Marvel. Yeah, it's brand Marvel. Marvel. It's gonna have a stupid fan base that's large. Yeah. I mean, yeah. stupid large, not that the fan base is stupid. Excuse <laughs> me. It's gonna have a large fan base, but the how problem dare was, you? If the casuals didn't buy the you made game. fun of Spider Man. <laughs> the casuals didn't buy the game because let's be honest, when the first trailers came out and the first builds were shown, characters look like ass. Most oh, most casuals like don't ass. buy these games at all. They don't you know buy these, you, these type of games. Dragon Ball Fighter sold two million copies. Well, I would say that's a little bit that's of a. Casual. I would be. I would say it's a little bit of an outlier. Um, I mean, it's Arxis. They're known for making good fighting games, but so was Capcom to a point. But then you know they released Street Fighter Five, which was essentially an alpha build that they sold as a sixty dollar game. Then they do this with Marvel vs. Capcom. If it wasn't for Monster Hunter doing so well capcom would be in some serious trouble with money yeah i don't think they have any troubles with monster hunter that game no that's that's fucking... like keeping them afloat right now that game was huge man that was a huge game actually, i actually haven't played that game in a while i gotta hop back in there and i think that's it for i think that's it guys short little show an hour some news for you usually loco does the news for us but he wasn't here, so we had to scrap some stuff together. Hope you guys enjoyed the show. Make sure you tune in on Friday for our tech show. We have to go record it now. So we'll talk to you guys later. Bye-bye. Peace. Bye-bye.